Hello and welcome to a video from filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. I'm Chris with a K. Link in the description of my website. Today we're going to be looking at awk. Now, you may think of awk as a command that you use in your shell scripts, but awk is really its own language altogether, and you can actually write awk scripts. And basically, anything you can do in a word processor, you could do in awk just by writing out some commands. Now, we're not going to get too advanced. We're going to just look at some basic commands. We're not even going to write a script in awk today. I'm just going to look at some commands. And a lot of these commands are things that you can do with other commands in the shell. For example, we're going to do stuff that you would normally do probably with grep. But the thing is, uh, using awk will avoid you having to pipe more than once, So, because awk can do things that grep does and other things, so you can combine it into one command rather than having multiple commands. Not that it's bad to have multiple commands if general purpose, but if you're looking for efficiency, having one program, one command that you can run without starting up new processes is beneficial. So we're just going to look over some basic thing with awk that you may not normally use. And uh, let's just go ahead and look at what I have going on here. In here, I am in a directory. And in this directory, I have one file called names.list. Now, normally if I want to view that, I would say names.list and it will list out the names. We have a column of first names and a column of last names. Well, you can use awk uh, just by giving it the print command and the file name. So uh, instead of saying cat, you would say awk and you would say print and the file name and it would print the entire file. Now, uh, I also tend to put my print command in these curly braces also in single quotations. Now, again, we have two columns separated by white space. So not a single space, but just any amount of white space. What I can do in here is instead of just saying print, I can say dollar sign one and it's gonna print the first column. So it's printing the first names. If I was to do the same thing, but change it to a two, it would print the second column. And of course, I can also go, uh, dollar sign one and two, and it's gonna print them together without any space there. Now, if we wanted a space, we can go in there and add in some quotation marks like so with a space in there. So what are we printing? We're printing column one and we are printing a, a single space there and then column two, I hit enter and now we're back to basically what the original file looks like, but we can put whatever we want inside these quotations for the most part. Uh, we can do tab and now it's doing a tab space, which may not be too clear in this case if I do one tab, but I could do two tabs and now you can see clearly two separate columns and of course I could put a third if I'd like. I'll put links in the description to all the commands I'm running by the way. Uh, okay, so we've done tabs, but we can also put text and it doesn't have to just be between them. So what I can do is uh, just same time, I'm going to copy and paste a command here. Uh, but what I'm going to say is I'm gonna say awk print and then we're gonna print the string their uh, their name is and then dollar sign one and then a space and then dollar sign two. Uh, and so what we get is their name is and then their first and last name. Now, of course, we can flip this if we want. We can say their name is and we can say their last name and their first name. Usually when you do that, you may want to put a comma. So we can come in here and we can put a comma in here instead of a space. Give a space there to just make it read a little bit better. Uh, so we can say their name is, and then we have their last name and then first name. Uh, we can also put other text in there. So again, I'm just gonna copy and paste uh, to prevent me from having to type too much and bore you guys. But we're saying awk, print, their first name is, and then dollar sign one, and their last name is dollar sign two. Making sure to put spaces between these quotations here so it prints with spaces between those words. So I can do that and we get that sentence for every line. Their first name is, and their last name is with their names in there. And again, if I was to not put this space here or here, or here, then you don't get those spaces and names kind of run together. So be sure to put those spaces in there if you want them. Uh, as I've already mentioned, we can do whatever delimiter we like. So we can come in here and right now we're working with empty spaces. If I said comma, now it prints it comma. And of course we can dump that into a file like this, new names.csv. And now I have a CSV file, uh, which is the output with commas. Now I did that, and again I can just say awk and woo, new names.csv. I forgot my print command, don't forget that. Print, and it prints that file so you can see it is a CSV file, which is a file with each limiter using uh, commas as delimiters for each field. Um, 
I did that by just putting a pipe at the end of the awk command, but you can also use it within awk. So let me go ahead and just real quick, I will delete my new names CSV and I will run this command again. But instead of putting this here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it inside my quotations over here. So and inside my curly braces. So now it's kind of part of the awk command rather than a separate command. And I type something wrong there. Right, the file name has to be uh, inside quotations. So we do this, there we go. And basically the same thing, but it could be useful to have that built in. But now I can cat out the names file. Of course I could use awk, but it is shorter to use other commands. Uh, you know, sometimes the commands, as you'll see, will be shorter if you just use grep and pipe it into another command. But again, we're looking for more efficiency of the code rather than efficiency of writing in the, some of these examples. It all depends on what you're working towards. Now, uh, we, we've talked about different delimiters. So again, I can print out, we've created that new file with CSV. So now I can print out, try to print out column one. But when I do that, you realize it prints out both columns because by default, awk is using white space as our delimiter. So to give it a new delimiter, we're going to give it the dash F option. Didn't really look it up. F might be for field. I don't know, field separator. We're going to do a comma here. Now, because this file has commas as a delimiter for each field, we get the first column. And of course we can do the second column and we can also put them together. So I can say, just like we did before, dollar sign one and put in our space there. We can also go back to using tabs. So I could say something like this. I could say, let's create a tab separated file. So we're taking our comma separated file. We're saying use a comma or comma as our delimiter, but in between each of those, these two fields in this case, we're going to use a tab. Now I can cat out names.tsv and we have pretty much what we had in the original case, but specifically it's using tabs, not just spaces, uh, where originally I'm not sure what we were using for those white spaces. Now, so done a lot of, uh, using kind of like cut is basically what we were doing if you were using awk, except for it's quite a bit more powerful than cut. And I do use awk quite often for that. But you can also use awk to search through a file for matches. So for example, I can say awk and I can give it forward slashes like this. And I can say what I want to look for. I can say MA and I can say, look at our file here and give me a match of any lines that have capital MA. There we go. So we have M A in all these lines with the capital M lowercase a. Uh, we can also, just like before, we can put this in quotation marks and give it the print command. So I can say like this, print dollar sign one. So we found all matches with M A in print of the first column, but I can also print the second column. So now we're finding all matches with M A, but only printing the last names, even though they may not have the M A in the last name. Now we can also say something like this. Let me just copy and paste again for ease. Look for any lowercase m. Great. So now we got these names because we have the lowercase m's here, which is different than if I was to say a capital M. But what we can also do, just like with grep, we can tell it to be case insensitive. So with this, we can say ignore case equals one, and then we'll search for the lowercase m, but really it's gonna search for any m. And then we get a full name, whether the name has a capital M or a lowercase m in it. And then we can also do something like this. Uh, let's say we want to find a name that has a m with a letter in between and then an r. So what we can do is this. I'm going to tell it again to ignore case. So awk ignore case. And then we're saying, okay, look for any line with an M dot R. Look through all our names. And then we get all these. We got M O R. We got M A R M A R. What if we want to match lines that begin with a certain character? Well, very similar to grep. We just give it the little caret symbol here. So we're going to look for any line that begins with a, in this case, capital M. And there we go. We get a list of those names. We can do another letter. Letter. We can say, okay, find any line that begins with a lowercase t. We're not going to get any, 
because all our names start with capital letters. So again, make sure if you want to be case insensitive, do the case insensitive sensitive, or give it a full letter or the proper case letter. And here we got our two names that begin with a capital T. We're looking at lines in this case that begin with a capital T. Uh, and what about lines that end with something? Well, just like in grep, the dollar sign would be our expression for that. We're gonna look for any line that ends with ER, lowercase er in this case, and we get three names, Fuller, Wheeler, and Wagner. Great. What if we wanna find matches uh, that incorporate different letters? That doesn't make any sense saying it. Let me show you. Here we're gonna say, ah, look for any line that has a capital P, ca or capital B, capital P, or capital J. So any one of those followed by a lowercase a. And we get these names. We get BA, PA, JA, BA, JA, BA. So you can do that. We can also look at this. So let's say we want to search for barns. We get a list name, we have two barns here. But what if we wanna look for barns or Jacob, so a line that has either of those. So we can say here, we're saying awk, and then inside our parentheses divided by a pipe symbol, we're saying we're looking for any line that has Barnes or Jacobs in it. There we go. Very similar again to how you would use grep, just you know, regular expressions. Now, you might be familiar with the WC command. The WC command will allow you to ca count uh, words, characters, and lines in a file. If we say WC-L and give it a file name, it'll count how many lines are in that file. Here, we get 24 lines in that file. Well, I can do the same thing. Again, the line's a little bit longer. Uh, we can do something like this. So basically, we're creating a variable, CNT, and it's gonna loop through, and each loop, it's going to add one to it, and then at the end, it's going to print that number. So again, we got 24. But we can also use the print command to append text to that. So here I can say, not only are we going to create this variable and count, uh, and then at the end of the file, we're going to print the word count equals, and then that number we got. So they were going to get count equals 24. Great. Uh, let's look at some more. So again, if we want to, we could Let's say we wanted to count not the total lines, but lines that we match. So here I can say grep, ma, uh, and the name. And so we're gonna get any line with a capital M, A, and then word count. Now, uh, I can't remember off the top of my head. I actually think there's something built into grep that I wouldn't need to pipe this into WC. I'm just using this as an example. Uh, but again, there, there, I'm pretty sure there's a command in grep that will give you the match count. But in, in this case, it's four. I'm just giving that as an example so you can see what we're doing here. And again, we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna say, look for lines with capital M, A, and then do the whole counting and then print the total at the end, and we get four. So there you go. Uh, what else can we do? Uh, we're almost to the end of this tutorial. We're gonna look at printing lines with more than a certain number of characters on a line. So here, I'm gonna say, Okay, use awk, get the length of the line, uh, any line that is greater than 15. So any line that has more than 15 characters on it, print that line. Great. Uh, now we can also use the count if we wanted to. So here we're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna print the count. So instead of printing our output, we're gonna say, okay, look for all lines that are greater than 15 characters, and then just tell me how many of those there are. And uh, yeah, that is pretty much it. There we go. And uh, yeah, I hope you found this useful. Again, uh, a lot of these uh, could be shorter commands if you use something like grep or uh, WC, easier to remember definitely for me, but awk is a powerful tool and you have to learn the basics before we move on to more advanced stuff. So although you may not use a lot of these commands by themselves, they're gonna come in handy if you start combining stuff later on, again, rather than doing a bunch of um, Piping, which piping is super powerful, super useful, but it also is slow starting up different processes. Also, it makes things easier. Let, again, we can use the print command to print not only the line count, but words, where if I was to use grep to get the line count, but wanted to preference it with some text, I might have to do grep to grep the lines and count the lines and throw that into a variable and then use a separate echo command to echo some text and then give you the line count, where Aqua will let you do that all without starting extra processes. So. It's definitely a powerful tool. It's something that I don't use as much as I should. I think most of us don't use as much as we should. And again, we're using it here in our shell and it could be used in shell scripts, but it is its own scripting language. You can create a script file that is just awk commands 
for awk to run. And again, it won't be spawning all these extra processes. And that's really the benefit of it. One of the benefits of it. So filmsbychris.com. That's Chris the K. There's a link in the description. As always, I thank you for watching and I hope that you have a great day.